Hello friends, it's Jim O'Rear. Today we are at Daytona Beach, Florida, which is a place where the police call uh, a city full of um, people you're not going to like, like prostitutes and college kids blowing off steam and biker gangs and, you know, that's their words, not mine. But what I am most fascinated with in Daytona is the amount of serial killers. There are tons and tons of serial killers from Oba Chandler to Robert Hayes to Eileen Warnows. Uh, but today we are going to look at Gerald Stano. And uh, he's racked up a body count of almost like 88 people. So we're going to go look at some of the places where his bodies were stashed, some of the places he hung out, and walk in his footsteps. So come on. Gerald Eugene Stano was an American convicted serial killer that spent a lot of time in the Daytona Beach area. Stano murdered at least 22 young women and girls, confessed to 41 murders, and the police say the number of his victims may be closer to 88. Stano was born as Paul Zinninger on September 12, 1951 in New York, the fifth child born to his mother and the third she put up for adoption. His biological mother neglected him to such an extent that when she gave him up for adoption at six months old, county doctors declared that he could not be adopted. They said he was functioning at an animalistic level, even eating his own feces to survive. Stano had four biological siblings who were given up for adoption. A nurse named Norma Stano eventually adopted him and legally changed his name. Despite his foster parents being described as loving, Stano continued to have behavioral problems. In school, he earned C's and D's in all subjects except music at which he excelled. He lied compulsively and was once caught stealing money from his father's wallet to pay members of the track and field team to finish behind him so he would not be viewed as a complete failure. During his youth, Stano was often bullied. At the age of 14, he was arrested for a false fire alarm and later for throwing rocks at cars from a highway bridge. Stano did not graduate high school until he was 21. After receiving his diploma, he enrolled in a computer school, graduated, and began working in a local hospital. Soon after, he was fired for stealing from co-workers. After moving to Ormond Beach, he was fired from one job after another for either theft or tardiness. Stano was arrested on March 25, 1980, after attacking a woman named Donna Hensley, who escaped a hotel room and contacted authorities. Hensley told police that she was a prostitute and had been approached by a man requesting her services. Once at her motel room, the two began to argue, and the man ended up stabbing her 30 times with a knife before insulting her and fleeing. Stano was known to Hensley and local sex workers, and she was able to identify him to authorities. Officially, Stano admitted that he began killing in the early 1970s, when he was in his 20s. However, he also claimed to have begun killing in the late 1960s at the age of 18. Several girls had gone missing in Stano's area of residence at the time, but insufficient physical evidence was found when these claims were investigated almost 20 years later, and Stano was never charged. He was most active in Florida and New Jersey. Stano admitted to committing the first murder in New Jersey in 1969. He also confessed to having killed six other women in Pennsylvania. After moving to Florida, he may have murdered 30 or more women. Most of Stano's victims were women in vulnerable circumstances, all except two were Caucasian, and most of his known victims were between the ages of 16 and 25. By his 29th birthday, Stano was in prison for allegedly murdering 41 women. He was housed with fellow serial killer Ted Bundy until the latter's execution in 1989. Stano admitted to several murders across Florida from 1973 to 1980. Kathy Scharf, age 17, was a hitchhiker from Port Orange, Florida, whose body was found here by hunters at the Merritt Island National Wildlife Refuge. Susan Basile was 12 years old when she was last seen in Port Orange, Florida, and according to Stano's confession, he had picked her up from school and enticed her with a ride here to Skate City, which uh, no longer exists. It is now a classic car showroom. A fisherman found the body of 16-year-old Linda Hamilton strangled and buried in the sand at the beach at Turtle Mound State Park. Ramona Neal, 18 years old, 
was found here in Tomoka State Park. Her body had been covered with branches. Mary Marr, age 20, was abducted from the Daytona Beach boardwalk, right back there, and stabbed to death. Here on Primrose Lane, a boy found a human skull in this wooded area at the end of the street. When investigators arrived, they found more body pieces and pieces of clothing. Apparently, wild animals had torn the body apart and scattered the remains everywhere. An autopsy later revealed that the victim was 26-year-old Tony Haddox, a prostitute. The cause of death had been determined to be multiple stab wounds to the head. With potentially 88 victims, the list could go on and on, but the bodies of victims who had been stabbed, strangled, sexually assaulted, shot, and dumped across the area was massive. Stano was found guilty of nine murders and received eight life sentences and one death sentence, the latter of which was carried out by electric chair on March 23, 1998 in Florida State Prison. Stano's final statement proclaimed innocence and directed blame for his false confessions at the lead investigator Paul Crow. He stated, I am innocent, I am frightened, I was threatened, and I was held month after month without any real legal representation. I confess to crimes I did not commit. So yeah, right there to the end, uh, then Stano decided he wanted to say that he confessed to murders that he didn't commit, but too late by that point. So I hope that's given you a glimpse into Gerald Stano, that, uh, you know, hung out a lot here in the Daytona Beach area and uh, has given you a look at some of the locations and what they look like today. So I hope you've enjoyed watching this video. If you have, click that like button to let the powers that be know that you like the video. And while you're at it, click on follow or subscribe and you'll be notified when I upload new videos. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you next time.